Hello folks, welcome to Navarro Linux, GNOME desktop. Today I'm going to talk about um, something that um, after you install this distribution it makes mention of web apps and a lot of people are going, well, how do you use it? There really isn't that uh, much instructions on that. So I'm going to talk about using uh, web apps um, in this video here. I actually have other videos too on my YouTube site for a different distribution using the same utility or application. So. You don't need any coding skills uh, for this and uh, any any user can use this so today I am filming in sorry about that today I'm filming in 3840 by 2160 4k in essentially at 200% scaling uh, I do encourage that you investigate your player too if it's not to your liking go click that gear down there and change it to the appropriate uh, screen resolution for you also, you can watch my videos on the big screen TVs. If you got the YouTube app, just take a look at the channel. Channel name, that is. None of my videos are less than two minutes. They all have chapters and timelines. And uh, I do encourage that you read my about section and also the community tab to uh, do some keyword searches on those 111 videos I have on my YouTube site, especially if you're looking for more information on web apps, some more advanced uh, features. So I'm going to give you the basics today. Navarro Linux. It's a uh, Fedora-based distribution, and you can uh, find the information on possibly even uh, DistroWatch. But uh, in either case, folks, welcome. Now, I have an icon here that goes to LFS, Linux for Seniors, my YouTube site, in other words, my new YouTube site. You can also find my site by typing in at Linux for Seniors, one word, on your uh, web browsers. I do have 111 videos, so if you are using a standard web browser, you can use the magnifying glass and follow the instructions in the community tab to do keyword searches if you're not too sure how to do that. My next video, I'm going to talk about mouse pointers. This is a non-standard mouse pointer or cursor. I will talk about a YouTube site, I'm sorry, a website, a website that has uh, over 700 of these kind of mouse pointers since the this distribution only has the black one installed. I picked the yellow just because of the color so you can see this easily. So anyways, that icon was created by using web apps. So what is web apps? Let's open it up. Test it out. So web apps, again, a lot of people say it doesn't have a lot of information. Well, that's true. So we have keyboard shortcuts, which I don't use, but here they are nonetheless. You have an about section and you can click on that website and there's a readme file, but it's limited in uh, text. So I'm going to basically point out a couple things you can do with this tool. It's a creation tool. It creates web-based icons. You don't need any coding skills whatsoever. Anyone can do this. You can create web-based icons usually within 20 seconds. That LFS was created that way. The Linux for Seniors link, this icon right there. I'm going to create one for Amazon in front of you right now. So there are four tools here, plus to add, minus to remove, whatever you have highlighted, pencil to edit, and the launch key, which I don't use. So technically, I only use three. So let's do one for Amazon.com. Again, you don't need any coding skills, as long as you can type. So the address field has to be an existing website, and you can manually type it in, or you can cut and paste them from web browsers, www dot amazon.com as in this example not all websites as a matter of fact most websites will not produce an icon most but there are some that will Facebook is another one I'll do that example next you can also click that little thing find icons online or you can manually assign icons yourself pick something from the system including emojis or browse for your own folders and icons some of my other advanced videos will show that. Anyways, um, category web, just leave it alone. Firefox web browser is good enough for me even though I have FNE installed. Custom web browser parameters, I'm not gonna talk about. I do have some other videos that discuss part of that. Navigation bar, I do like. Navigation bar is this bar right here. I think everybody likes navigation bar, but if you don't, leave it off. Private incognito window, I don't use. But more importantly, if you feel like you need to have that, turn it on. I'm done. Amazon is now part of my icon set in my 
my menu over here now. It's just like any other icon. I'm going to type in AM because I'm searching for Amazon right here. Right click. I can create a desktop shortcut. Pin it to dash or menu. I'm going to pin it to the dash. And now it's sitting down here at the bottom. So I'm going to click it, test it out. Got a privacy notice. I'm going to turn that off. I get that every time I create these things. Anyways, you can log in. And uh, if you do have an Amazon account, for instance, and you logged in, uh, Mozilla is going to take care of your credentials, your login information, in other words. If I reopen this up, I think it's going to ask me one more question about previous tabs. I'm going to close that, and now it won't ask me that anymore. Again, this is just a web-based icon. So how many of these can you create? As many as you want, and to all kinds of different places. I'll do another one here for Facebook. I'm just going to call it F. And then tab over, www.facebook.com. The next example, I'm going to do a cut and paste from a web browser for the address. So again, I get two choices. If I don't find an icon, I can click that or assign my own. And I'm done. Now I'm going to look for F in my menu. And uh, there it is. Right click, pin it to the dash, and give it a test run. How quickly can you do this? Very quickly. Again, if I had a Facebook account and entered my uh, credentials in here, Firefox is the one that's going to maintain that information. What if, uh, if you're wanting to edit stuff? Okay. When you're editing your web-based icon, normally if it has logging information attached to it, you may have to re-log in only once. But that's only if you're editing. So if you edit the name, the address, icon, whatever information in here, like a custom parameter, it's an edit nonetheless. And it will more likely, if it has logging information attached, will ask you to re-log in. Other than that, that's about it. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to wait for this thing to refresh, and it just did. I don't know if you saw that icon, it just blinked. You can also unpin these things and then repin them after you change the icon or the, uh, let me do that also. So let me do something silly. Web apps. I'll just uh, pick an emoji or something like that. Something silly. How about that? I'm going to hit OK. And I'll wait for the system to update, or shall I just point at it? Well, the system updated automatically for me. I could have also unpinned it and repinned it. It still goes to Facebook no matter what. Okay. I get rid of that little link thing. And now it shouldn't ask me that anymore. So the, the login information is kind of like when you put launchers on your desktop. It says untrusted launcher, that kind of information. Yeah, okay. Hopefully that was clear. Now let's do something from the actual web browser. And uh, here's Disto Watch. So let's use that one as a guinea pig. I want you to notice the icon. So I'm going to copy this thing. So it's an HTTPS. Hopefully you know what the S means. It means secure. That's why that's a lock symbol. So it, the uh, web apps will handle both HTTP and HTTPS. On my more advanced videos, I show one how to create a web-based icons for your home-based routers, for instance. That one doesn't use an S, that one uses a regular HTTP because they want your router wants to challenge you with your password and, and uh, normally you don't have a security certificate on your home routers. Right click, copy. Now the reason I recommend minimizing this just in case you didn't copy that properly. So I open up web apps. I keep uh, closing it. I could just minimize it from now on. And I'm going to click in the address field and hit Right click and hit paste. And I will just call that DW for distro watch. And then I'm going to look for an icon online. They should have some. If they don't, I'll click the icon thing and go assign it one. And they have four of these little word. Well, they're not that sharp, but more importantly, they're icon nonetheless. That's all I need. Now DW is ready to go. So I'll type in DW in here. Go find it. Right click pin it to my dash and give it a test ride and get the privacy notice get rid of that 
get rid of the post-it note, close, and one more time reopen, and it's gonna complain about the previous sessions, no big deal, close, and it won't ask that anymore. Okay, so that's one thing. Little tip for you, if you don't know how to do this, I show this on some other videos, any web browser pretty much works in. I have a USB-based computer mouse with a scroll wheel on it. If you are inside of the uh, web browser page, you can hold down your control key with your one hand and using your computer mouse scroll wheel to resize the text from 30%, this is Firefox, to 500%. And I'll scroll back the other way. You have to be inside the page itself, not on top in here. Okay, so I'll make this back up to 100 and close. Let's do one more. And uh, this time I'm going to close the browser and just reopen it so you can get a fresh, fresh perspective. And uh, I will, I'm going to look for flight radar 24. So this is also available as a mobile app on your uh, iPhones and your Android phones. Uh, this is a, actually a very cool website. Shows you all the airplanes in the sky live. I don't know about you, but you, you're not allowed to go into the airport to wait for your loved ones anymore. So a lot of people circle the airport and never realize their flight is delayed. Wouldn't it be nice to know that before you start driving toward the airport? Well, you can put in flight information in here. You can also have fun with this by clicking on airplanes and tell you where they're from and where they're going to. That one left uh, looks like Dallas is going to San Francisco, so it's almost there. It even shows you the flight path. Gives you all the particulars, including commercials, of course. It looks like you can upgrade the, probably to the free version, but this is available as a mobile app also. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna copy the front end. And this, of course, also is an HTTPS website. So web apps handles both, if you're wondering about that. Some people don't know what the difference is. That's okay. If you're just creating icons, we're not going to focus in on that. So this time, click in here, right click and paste. We're going to call that uh, what? Uh, Flight Radar FR24? I don't know. Give it a name. Let's see if you can find an icon online. If it doesn't, you can always assign it one. And they do have some. And I do want a navigation bar. And you can actually leave it without. And um, I like the navigation bar, but you'll see what happens if you don't put that on. You won't have a navigation bar on your, on your web page. These, are, these again are just web shortcuts. That's all they are. So we're doing flight radar. So I could test it here. I can launch it here. I could also double click on it by doing that and get rid of the privacy notice and the cookies and all that stuff. Now, FR24 is available in my menu, so I don't need the web tool anymore. FR24 narrows it down all the way down to the bottom. And uh, in other words, uh, there's nothing else being shown other than the Firefox pin to dash. And I can now test it. There are many, many websites you can do this with. I'm just showing you a couple. If you want to think about your utility bills, your insurance, um, anything that has to do with you wanting something uh, that you are repetitively going. I actually use this, believe it or not, on my personal computer. My personal computer. I have also web apps installed on that one that I actually use my own shortcuts that are going to live um, sh uh, places on the internet because I just don't want to sit there and search for that. You can certainly uh, make, you know, on your web browsers, you can certainly make shortcuts here and do the, accomplish the exact same thing. All I'm doing here is just making shortcuts here. If I need distro watch right away, there we go. And I use this website constantly because I'm, I'm looking for information sometimes on new distributions, you know, to see what's going on in the world of Linux, for instance. If I'm um, wanting to go shopping on Amazon, my other icon actually has my login information tied into it. This is more of a generic one because it's waiting for me to sign in. 
or if I had uh, somebody that is landing at my local airport, I can go up here and punch in their flight numbers and find out where they are in the air or any anything else for that matter. All right, there's just some examples regarding um, web apps. Again, it's a utility or application that you can create web-based icons. Very simple tool, tells you the browser that you're currently using, the name, you can of course edit that at any time. And don't forget that if, you, if it is uh, something that has login information, just be prepared to log back in if you alter the icon. Other than that, these are shortcuts. Web app applications that are treated just like any other icon on your menu. You can distribute them on your panel bars, your desktops, and other places. My next video, I'm going to talk about mouse pointers because the only mouse pointer on this distribution is a black one. I'll show you how to install them using nothing but your file manager and some best practices because I've heard this story before. A lot of people that have been uh, automatic uh, theme installers on their distributions, a lot of them fail. That's because they don't uncompress things properly. I'll talk about all that on my next video. You folks take care.